in Indianapolis to get up close with Catherine Legg, one of the world's best female motor drivers. Let's take a ride. We follow the first year IndyCar Series driver for 24 hours as she attempts to pass her rookie orientation to qualify for the sport's most prestigious race, the Indy 500. It's not just another race, it's the Indy 500 and this is, you know, make or break time. Also, we hear how she's setting a new agenda for women in the sport. The car doesn't know the difference, whether you're a girl or a boy or whatever how she's getting over her infamous internet moment. If the accident had been my fault, I think I maybe feel differently about it. And we hear how she maintains her femininity in a tough man's world. I want to be seen as feminine, professional, focused, um, and still very marketable. Catherine is at the annual Sam Schmidt Racing to Recovery Gala on the eve of her rookie orientation programme. Each new recruit to the Indy 500 has to pass the three-part test before they're clear to compete in the race. But a week into practice, Catherine still hasn't been on track to test her car. Her team, Dragon Racing, is embroiled in a dispute with engine manufacturers Lotus after the team decided to switch to the better performing Chevrolet engine. And the pressure is mounting for the debutante. Actually, the engine turned up today, so I will get to do my rookie practice tomorrow morning really early before everybody else gets on track. So that is a bit of a relief, but we're still a week behind those guys, you know. They've done their race setup, they've done their qualifying setup, they've tried all the parts, they've run in traffic, they've done this, that and the other for five days. Getting in that car tomorrow, I'm under a ton of pressure to perform when I haven't driven here before. I'm a rookie, I haven't driven one of these cars for so long. It's just like the, the things mount up against you and then you have to put your blinkers on and you have to think, okay. Regardless of all that, I have to do the best job that I can possibly do. At the gala to raise funds for the Schmidt Foundation, a charity named after the driver who was paralysed in a crash while testing for the 2000 IndyCar season, Catherine's working the room and getting as much advice on the track from her fellow drivers. You've sort of get, got to get over the feeling of it sort of riding on the right rear a little bit. But, um, it never does go? Or... I haven't had any moments. So. And you've been pretty trimmed out? Yeah, or... I mean, just work up to it with the aero balance and stuff. And... With Let's more aero, is it still like rookie practice? I'll be able to go and bang in the laps, yeah. and it won't be a problem. Yeah, yeah, no, you'll be fine. I mean, as long as you just work up to it, don't feel in any rush. And when you are the car in front and you're drafting, can you feel the air being taken away from you? Does the car feel looser because you've got somebody behind you? No. Okay, good. Because it looks like it makes such a big hole in the air that it might affect the car in front. Oh. Catherine is a staunch supporter of the Schmidt Foundation, and it's the ideal time of the year to raise the profile of good causes. Any of the little things that we can do, especially during the Indianapolis month, the month of May, the five, anything surrounding the 500 that we can get publicity for or help in any way, then I think that it's a really good thing to be able to do. Sam Schmidt's accident also highlights the dangers drivers face each time they climb into the cockpit. In 2006, Catherine experienced these dangers herself. She was involved in a horrific crash in the Champ Car World Series, an incident which became an internet hit. If you type Catherine Leg, all you get is the biggest crash you've ever seen in your life, and uh, I'm not proud of that. <laughs> But it, it wasn't my fault, so I can kind of separate it in my, in my mind. So I've been there, I've done that, I, I've got the broken car parts, and um, I know what it's like, and it's not nice, and it's not something I want to do again. Uh, if, it, if the accident had been my fault, I think I maybe feel differently about it, but because it was one of those things, you know every time you strap yourself into that race car, what could potentially happen. Um, you don't dwell on it, you don't think about it, but you have a healthy respect for it. Born in Surrey, England in 1980, Catherine started out in karts at an early age. In 2000, she was named the most promising youngster by Racer magazine, joining past recipients of the award Jensen Button and Kimi Raikkonen. 
Leg also made history in 2005 when she became the first woman since 2002 to test a Formula One car. She moved to the Champ Car World Series where she became the first female to lead a lap in series history. In 2008, Leg joined the prestigious DTM series in Germany where she again shone brightly. In 2012, Catherine signed a two-year deal with Dragon Racing in the IndyCar series, becoming one of only three women to compete in the 2012 series. And tomorrow she faces her biggest test yet in qualifying for the Indy 500. I mean, at the end of the day, there is no room for anything to go wrong. Um, I have to complete rookie orientation practice in the one and a half hours in the morning. My teammate is getting in and shaking the car down and doing his refresher because he's been here before. We have one and a half hours. He has to get in and do his. They have to take the seat out, put my seat in, do my belt, everything. Headrest a lot. I have to get in and do two lots of 10 lap runs at 205 and 210 and the yada yada yada. So, if anything goes wrong, we're completely screwed. So there is no roof error. I mean, we have to just get it done. Otherwise, it makes the month even more complicated. So it has to go well. I can only believe that it's going to go well. But as the sun rises over Indianapolis, the mechanics and engineers are still hard at work fitting the new Chevrolet engine. Former F1 star Sebastian Bourdais is Leg's teammate at Dragon Racing. As the more experienced driver, he will break the car in and complete his Indy Circuit refresher program as he hasn't driven at Indianapolis Speedway for seven years. Catherine will then attempt to complete her orientation program. She has until 12 noon and the start of main practice, but it's already past 9 a.m. With news filtering through that the dispute with Lotus has been settled, team owner Jay Penske is optimistic about Catherine's chances. She hasn't enough testing time this year. Uh, I think this is going to be, the, the month of May is going to be very short for the entire Dragon Racing team. But I think with the quality of people we have, the engineering crew, Catherine's talents, if we take our time, we're going to have something special. As the car is eventually pulled onto the track, time is of the essence. The wait for leg seems almost over. Yeah, fine. Uh, looking forward to getting in the car eventually. <laughs> you know, it's been a long, long week, so I'm a little excited about getting out there. Just. Uh, Seb's going to shake the car down and do his um, refresher thing, and then obviously I'll get to drive, so. However, as Leg watches on, all is not right with the car. Bourdais manages to complete his refresher programme, but the car will have to go back to the garage for adjustments. The engine's running fine. Um, we're just having a little bit of a, an issue with the cold temperatures this morning, but uh, it, it's got plenty of power. <laughs> Pretty happy about that, uh, but we, we got a lot of work on the chassis side. Uh, first pick out there was probably not right on the money, but uh, we'll be okay. Catherine opens up to waiting journalists about her frustrations. Most of it you don't actually know, and you can't go to your team owners and people involved, like, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, because it pisses them off in the end, right? I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. So we were just kind of trying to be as patient as we could. But for race car drivers, that's not always the easiest of things to do. In adversity, she still manages a brave face. The engineers and mechanics work against the clock as they try desperately to make all the required adjustments. If you gave us our choice, it would take about three hours so we'd do it properly. But right now, we're going to do the shock displacement because we're not, we don't think they're right. I think we have a problem, so we're going to work on that first, and we're going to have to do each one separately, so it could take an hour. I'm going to say one of the biggest problems we had earlier is the car went together quite late, so the data wasn't something we can trust. You know, if you, if you can't trust it, there's no point in having it. You might as well just not look at it, because it'll lie to you and tell you something completely wrong. So in that case, you do rely completely on the driver to say what they feel. Now, once we've proven the data, then when she said we made a change once, and she said the car feels more unstable, I'm not really sure what's going on, and I trusted the ride height sensors at that time, I looked at it, and she was absolutely right. It was hitting the ground. So that was, and that's why she felt the instability. And sometimes they can feel it hit, and sometimes it's not such a, a smash. So it's, that was in one case where I could use the data, but we really were relying on her more to give us feedback because 
as this is why we're doing so much right now, we don't really trust it, so. Yeah, my expectations have definitely greatly over this week. You know, beginning of the week, we thought if we come here with the Chevrolet engine and we've got all the testing in the world, I mean, we have some of the best people in the business, if not the best people in the business. We should be able to do it. Okay, we don't have all the fancy parts we need, but we have a lot of them, and we have a big engineering powerhouse with the three engineers that we've got there are all very, very talented guys. So I'm, uh, I was thinking we're going to have a legitimate shot of winning this thing. Uh, not to say that I'm not thinking that now, but being realistic with the six, seven days of testing that we've actually effectively missed out on. Can we catch that up? No, I mean, I would be stupid to stand here and say, yeah, we can still win. I mean, miracles do happen, right? And anything can happen in this race, so you have to be positive. Um, but I really think that if we can just get it in the race, in qualifying day, and then work on our race setup, if we can move forward in the race, finish inside of the top 12, that would be like a win for us, obviously. Mum and dad turn up to add needed encouragement. However, the prospect of their daughter missing the biggest event of her career looms. Finally, the car is ready to drive, but there are only 30 minutes left before the noon deadline. With all working frantically, Catherine has to complete a designated number of laps at a variety of high speeds, but the minutes are ticking away. <laughs> Catherine is away, but has she enough time to complete the programme in the designated time slot? leg fails to beat the clock. However, the track authorities give her special dispensation to complete phase two of her rookie orientation after main practice at six o'clock this evening. For Catherine, the drama continues. Coming up, we see if Catherine can complete her rookie orientation. This is kind of unheard of that they gave us that time on track, so words cannot describe how grateful I am for that opportunity. And we get to hear how Catherine is helping the sisters to do it for themselves. I think she's giving a lot of people hope, a lot of women hope that, little girls even, that, that this is something that they can do. This is actually a career path if they love it they have a chance just like little boys do. We're up close with IndyCar's Catherine Legg as she attempts to pass her rookie induction for entry into the sport's most prestigious race, the Indy 500. Earlier, Catherine completed the first part of the program, but ran out of time attempting the second of three parts. So she now has to wait until after main practice to fulfill her lifetime ambition. There is nothing like the Indy 500. And I remember when I was like nine years old and I was first into racing and my dad and I would sit at home and watch it on the telly when Nigel Mansell was doing it and Michael Andretti and all those guys. So. Um, it's really surreal to be a part of that and one of very, very few that has been given this opportunity. So, I, uh, yeah, it's for sure the biggest race for me, but it's also the biggest stress. And I know that I should look at it like it's just another race, but it's not just another race, it's the Indy 500 and this is, you know, make or break time at the end of the day. If Catherine makes it, she'll become only the ninth woman to compete in the Indy 500. Whilst the odds appear to be heavily stacked against women drivers, fortunately, Dragon Team owner Jay Penske had an open mind. I think there's difference between all drivers, but I think the great drivers can uh, can win in any series, and we think Catherine's one of those people that has a, has a chance to not only perform well, but to win here in IndyCar. 
Drivers cannot survive in the Indy series without the help of sponsors, and Catherine is indebted to TrueCar, who not only assist Leg financially, but are at the heart of a pioneering scheme which supports the development of women in motorsport. We have six women as part of the Women Empowered Initiative. They're all in different series and, and in different developmental phases. So we're actually, uh, we've, uh, we've found women that we think are competitive in all those classes and are giving them the chance to be competitive and to win. They think that there is no reason why, like with buying a car, women should be treated any differently to men. So they are, yeah, unbelievably giving us all this fantastic opportunity to, to show what we're made of and, and try and perform to the best of our ability. Um, there's five other amazing young girls who uh, in their own field will be very successful as well and you know I can't thank TrueCar enough for, for what they've done and I think that it's going to turn into some kind of really cool program because at first I thought okay think Spice Girls girl power is going to be that kind of thing but now the more we get into it the more male fans we actually have um, because and this is what I didn't realize or think about in the beginning. Most guys, you know, they have a mother, a sister, a wife, a daughter, whatever it may be, that they love and respect, obviously. And so they can relate to the program and they want to be able to relate to the program. So it's um, getting a lot of support from men too, which I was surprised about, but obviously very grateful for as well. The aim of the initiative is to create a level playing field for women, but it's an uphill battle. It's, it's harder for them to get the funding, and it's all about the sponsorship monies. Um, today, still 95% of the sponsorships go to men, so it's definitely, it's definitely harder. It's definitely more of an uphill battle. You know, I hate that discrimination word. Um, I am a race car driver at the end of the day. Racing driver, I should say. I've become a bit American, haven't I? <laughs> um, I don't think, the car doesn't know the difference, whether you're a girl or a boy or whatever. Um, I do get treated differently. Yeah, that's obvious. I don't know what it's like to be treated like a guy because I've never been one. <laughs> um, but uh, sometimes it's gone in my favor and sometimes it's gone against me. For sure, I've fought a lot more battles being female in this business than I would have had to if I'd been male. But would I have been given the same opportunities that I've had if I'd been male? Pro probably not. So if I find it really difficult to weigh up that whole equation. I don't know. I don't know how you quantify it, to be honest. And I would say that it's changing very rapidly. Um, more and more girls are getting involved. More and more girls are being somewhat successful. Um, it's obviously not there yet. I'd like to see more women in all the other aspects. You know, I've got a, a girl, a woman I should say, um, assistant engineer at the moment, also called Catherine. And she's awesome. Like, I have so much respect for her. She's so good at her job. I'd like to see more women in those kind of roles. I think that's really important. Um, mechanics, engineers, in PR, every aspect of racing I would like to think that they believed that it was possible for them to be a part of, you know, not just brolly dollies. This team, I'm a junior engineer, so I do data and fuel strategy and things like that. I'm an aerodynamicist, I'm a trained aerodynamicist, so I get to do a little bit of that, not as much as I'd like, but I've, my father's been in racing for years and that's how I got into it. I started when I was 13, so I've been around a long time. I've had a lot of amazing drivers, a lot of great teams. I did. I've done NASCAR, Formula One, sports cars, all kinds of stuff. When I was in F1, I was in the tunnel 24-7. It was seven days a week, always in the tunnel. We didn't have rules then, so we could test as much as we wanted. But I liked being in the tunnel, but I had an opportunity to come back to the States and run a car at the track, so I took that. I like to do both. Back at the garage, Catherine keeps busy. She's a popular member of the Indy series with her own apparel line, but she doesn't see herself as the Indy pinup girl that former series driver Danica Patrick was. A lot of people have asked me whether I'd like to do what Danica did and do bathing suit shots and all that kind of stuff. And I think what she's done is made a very, very lucrative career for herself, but I don't want 
young girls to think that that's the only way you're going to be successful in racing. And up until now, it pretty much has been. So what are they going to think? You know, I always think, what would I be happy with my mom and dad being happy with? And I would suspect that it's the same for all the parents of the young girls who come here and say, I want to be a race car driver or young boys even, you know, I want them to think that it's a possibility for them um, and to have been done in a right, I want to be a positive role model, I want to be, you know, thought of in the right light, I guess. But it is important to Leg to let her femininity shine. I think what was behind the photos and things we did was purely we wanted it to be feminine because I started to be feminine. You know, that's the whole marketing behind racing and, and me and racing. Um, don't want it to be some kind of butch focused, you know, like yeah, driver thing. I want to be seen as feminine, professional, focused, um, and still very marketable. I don't, you know, it's a very fine line that you have to walk on. And um, yeah, I am trying to do the best that I can with regards to that. And doing her best is what she's attempting in part two of the Rookie Orientation Programme. She has to complete 10 laps at 205 miles an hour, and she's on schedule. Before sunset, Catherine successfully completes part two of the programme, to the delight of the team and her sponsor. It was a roller coaster. It was the ups and downs. We kind of felt like we were going through them with her. It was, it was heartbreaking at times seeing her, you know, not knowing if she was going to get the engine. And then it was exciting knowing that she got the engine. And then. You know, knowing that it was a narrow window, I and mean, it was frustrating again. So it was just it was a roller coaster of emotions, but we ended on a high. We're happy she is out there. She did really well in her rookie orientation the first two phases, so we can be happier. Catherine will have to complete the third part of the program the following day, but today she proved her worth. You're looking good out there. You had a lot of pressure getting out there in the last uh, 40 oh, minutes. Yeah, That's right. fantastic. Come over here. Come over here and take a picture with me. They're right here. This has been something we've been waiting on all day. You mind? Good. The next day, Leg successfully completes the rookie orientation program and books her place in the Indy 500. Afterwards, she reflects on a monumental feat. Last night, I think the stress and the accumulation of everything building up just kind of was relief to get it all out of the way and get it done. Because through all of this, I've tried to maintain my composure and, uh, you know, tried to do the right thing and keep the team motivated and do what I can. That's within my control. There's not much within my control at the moment, but um, I tried to do my best. And then I, last night, I had a migraine just because I think it was like, okay, we're actually going to be there now. Everything's going to be okay now. You know, to be given the chance to race at Indy is like a dream come true. Not many drivers actually get the opportunity to do it, let alone to win it. So it's um, it's the biggest race in the world. You know, there's Formula One races. There's the Super Bowl, for goodness sake, over here. It's enormous. Um, but there is nothing like the Indy 500. Catherine went on to complete the 2012 Indy 500, finishing 22nd, a great achievement considering her build-up to the race. I hate my sport. <laughs> With a passion, it's driving me mental. Honestly, I don't know why I do it. Sometimes I think it's like an addiction or something because if you look at it reasonably, it's kind of stupid, right? <laughs> I mean, why would you put yourself in those dangers for all of that stress? But I... It's, on the other hand, I love it so much that my whole life revolves around it. There is pretty much nothing else to Catherine Leg as racing. Um, so, yeah, on the one hand, I, I, I hate it because it's so emotionally, gut-wrenchingly turmoil. It's, it's just, um, 
you know, nothing's ever, you've never reached, you can never reach your goals. Like, there's always something that you can strive for that is bigger, better, et cetera, et cetera. You're never really happy and content. But it's also, on the other hand, a really, to have that passion, it gives you something to wake up every morning for. It gives you something to dream about. Catherine Legg, a woman living out her wildest dreams.